Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sylvain Bobo, uh, I'm working for Red Hat and I'm going to introduce my uh, colleague, which is another Sylvain, but also from Red Hat, Sylvain Afchin. And today we're going to talk about Skydive, which is um, a software that was created two years ago at Red Hat and it's a real-time uh, network topology and protocols analyzer. So the reason uh, uh, behind Skydive is that th that's one of the primary use cases, it's troubleshooting and troubleshooting the network is uh, uh, particularly uh, hard. So by nature it's distributed, so you have to SSH a lot to many machines. Um, and sorry. And, um, and in, uh, when using SDN, uh, you can have a multiple SDN. So for example, you could have an open stack running with the Neutron SDN. And then on top of this, you could have uh, like a flannel network. And then troubleshooting is getting really, really, really hard. And the toolbox that is available to you is, um, well, if you use a, net, a proprietary SDN, you can have other tools. but the basic toolbox is the IP route uh, utils, so the IP uh, address and NetNS bridge, stuff like that. You also have the OV, uh, OpenV switch um, uh, tools, so OVS, uh, VSTTL, uh, uh, OFTTL to show the flows and stuff like that. You also have, of course, TCP dump and uh, Wireshark to do your packet analysis. So. So one of the goal of, uh, of, of Skydive, so we have to deal with many SDNs. So uh, we did not want to be tied to a single uh, SDN. So we wanted to be SDN agnostic to be able to, to, to use Skydive with Flannel, uh, uh, Neutron and stuff like that. Uh, another goal is it's, it's, uh, um, we have uh, to be able to do real-time analysis. So on a running platform like production, but also uh, some use cases is a uh, post-mortem analysis. So for example, if you had uh, uh, an issue, so the, 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 the reflex is to delete the instance and to try again, and then you're not able to troubleshoot anymore. So we do uh, SkyDive record everything so that you can do uh, the analysis uh, later. And it has to be lightweight because it's, uh, it's supposed to be running on your production machines. So and uh, really easy to deploy because uh, when the problem occurs, you have to be able to deploy Skydive re uh, really fast. So we came up with this uh, with this uh, with this software, which is a, a distributed uh, architecture. So um, to answer the, the easy uh, easy to deploy uh, question, it's the one binary to so for for all the different parts of Skydive. So a single binary, you just copy it and then you can run it. We also have a, a all-in-one mode, so you just start and you have everything. So it's uh, it's composed of only two two components, which is the agent, the Skydive agent. It's, it's supposed to to be running on all your uh, your compute compute nodes. And it's responsible to um, to to create the capture the, the network topology and also to capture the network flows, uh, and then it it it, for, it forwards everything to to another, another component, which is which is the Skydive analyzer, and its its role is to aggregate all this you know, topology information. Uh, do some more analyze, analysis and also to serve the the API. So. Uh, as the, this presentation is really uh, short, we are gonna, going to, to do a large demo. And we start with a very uh, quick overview of Skydive. So in our environment, we have one Skydive analyzer and two uh, Skydive agents. And so how does it look like? So that's, that's the web interface. Everything is accessible using the command line, but uh, let's use this. So here uh, you have one, one agent and another one, they are both connected. You, you see on uh, there, you see all the network interfaces, so the lo uh, local host, the ETH ones, and they are both connected uh, to a top of rack switch. So, so you, you can click on every node and get the information about the interfaces, so the, the MAC address, the MTU, and all the relevant informations. And you can also have the interface uh, metrics. So, so the number of packets dropped and received and stuff like that. 
So let's go back here. And now let's create some, some network objects and see how, uh, some, uh, how uh, SCADA reacts. So, so if we create uh, an interface, um, so SCADA will, uh, is listening to, to the netlink, uh, to the netlink um, events. So sorry, uh, sorry for the lag. So we see that the, the interface just appeared. Where is it? Uh, yeah, so here, here it is. And then we can also add an interface on, a, on this uh, interface. Interface, and we can see that Skydive was able to to see this, the the new interface. So we we really uh, do not do any polling. We do this. Uh, we try to to subscribe to all the the topology uh, topology mechanism. So for OVSDB, we listen for events, for Netlink, for Docker. Uh, it's uh, we try to avoid the polling as much as possible. And then, so now we're trying to to. Um, to generate and uh, to capture some packets. So to do this, we can do this. Uh, we can select an interface. So I'm going to to select uh, the ETH one on of every machine. Up. And you, you can select a pass. Up. And then you can specify your BPF filter to, to select only some, uh, certain kind of packets. Oh, and sorry, I'm going to do this again because I want to enable some options up here. Up. Yeah, let's ask for 10 packets. Up. Okay, and then uh, Skydive bundles a, a packet a traffic generator. And so you can choose, uh, you can select, uh, generate traffic, so you can generate ICMP, TCP dump, and stuff like that. Okay. And then I'm going to just generate uh, ICMP packets from there to there. And then we can see that up here at the bottom right, you can see that I can see the, the ICMP v4. Uh, packets that was just generated. And here you can also, you have a, a, with this button, you just can open this uh, with a wire shark and get access to the full, uh, full data. Okay. So that was for the, the um, uh, very simple demo, a little more complex. We are going to create a, a Docker container. So here, sorry, we can see that uh, Docker creates a network, in, a network, network namespace for uh, every container. And so uh, we can see it here. And an interesting thing, oh, stop moving. OK, and so, so that, that's the, the, the network namespace and the physical interface. But we can see that there is a picture here to say that it's a, a Docker container. So Skydive, when it, when it saw this network namespace, it asked uh, Docker if he knows about this, uh, about this namespace. And so you can have, uh, up, it's right there. It's a, but you can, you can have the, um, oh, sorry, it's a, so you can see here the namespace, but you can also, also click in the container and get the, the container ID and the container name and the container PID. So, yeah, that was for the demo. Um, so we have uh, we have other container uh, connectors. So we have we have connectors for OpenStack Neutron, uh, for OpenContrail, and uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, 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 connector is on the way, and uh, yeah. I don't know what's okay. Yeah, can you hear me? So yeah, perfect. Hi. Uh, so I'm the other Sylvain, uh, and I'm going to continue to to add complexity um, for the demo. So we are going to to deploy to use a Docker Swarm in order to deploy uh, an entire application. 
So basically, a data store with a MySQL container and uh, two um, WordPress container. So I'm, I'm going to do that. So first, uh, I'm going to, to initialize um, uh, Docker Swarm. Okay, which is done now, and uh, we will see that uh, we have some lags. Okay, so we we can see that um, Skydive already detected uh, uh, what uh, uh, Docker Swarm did. So we have uh, much more uh, network namespaces created. Uh, I'm not going to to see what what uh, what these containers uh, are doing, but uh, I'm going to continue to to create what I explained before. Meaning the the WordPress and the MySQL. So we are going to do that. We are going to start by create a, a Docker Swarm uh, network uh, used in order to interconnect our two um, services, uh, the MySQL and the WordPress. Uh, we start the the container, the service, uh, the service My, um, the MySQL service. So it's starting. And we should have the MySQL container appearing very soon. I hope. Yeah, just here. It's too huge for my laptop with the three VMs. Um, so we have much more uh, containers uh, network namespace involved in the in the in the deployment so we have here we know that this is the mysql instance we can click on it as explained by sylvain just before and we have much more details about uh, the service we have the docker labels uh, just here and we can see we have uh, uh, probably uh, one uh, namespace uh, uh, related to uh, the uh, docker uh, network uh, so I'm going to, to continue to start the, the WordPress, the first one, on the, the agent one. Which is done, so it should be there soon. So now we have everything uh, connected. So we can see that we have the other container just there in this namespace. Sorry for the click. And uh, just here. And uh, it seems that the, these two namespaces are interconnected by this one, this namespace, and this one as well with this pass. But in order to check the, what is uh, the namespace used by the, the network, Okay, I'm I'm going to do to do this fast. Uh, so so this one is probably the one used for the for the network uh, that I created just before. So I'm going to to start a capture between this point and this point in order to confirm that we have uh, we have uh, some packets. Uh, I'm going to do that very quickly because we are short in time. Not this interface, but this EOC. So the, uh, the EOC. sorry. Yeah, this one. This one. I'm going just to capture the traffic for uh, MySQL. Okay, we have now a capture, and I can go to the interface of the of WordPress in order to generate a bit of traffic. So this is not the good port. Sorry for that. Okay, so we should have some traffic there now, just here. And if we expand uh, the flow, we can see that uh, we have a, a MySQL traffic just there. So I am not going to continue, but I'm just going to explain what what we have just after. Uh, with the other uh, container uh, scheduled on the other node, on the other host, uh, we are able to follow packets uh, um, 
passing from one host to the other one and using the overlay, so the VXLAN interface. And we are able to follow a packet within a, a tunnel. So, and we, we do support uh, multiple uh, tunneling encapsulation. So we, we do support VXLAN, GRE, GNEV. So, and you can have a mix between them. So it means that if you have, a, for example, a, uh, an OpenStack deployment and on top of it, we, you have a, a container deployment with another SDN on top of that. You can follow the packet, uh, leaving uh, the first level of uh, the encapsulation and going to the other one. Uh, so I, I did capture some traffic and I, I'm going to skip this one. So we did everything with the, with the web UI, but uh, as Sylvain said just before, everything is, is doable with the, with the command line. So you can create the topology, you can create, uh, you can create the flows and the packets. Uh, you can create capture, uh, captures, uh, you can do packet injection, and we have an alerting mechanism that I'm not going to show you right now, but I, I can explain. You can write uh, alert rules for flows and topology, meaning that if there is a change uh, in terms of flows or traffic or in terms of uh, interfaces and stuff like this, you, you can get um, informed that something changed. So you can write, for example, rules for uh, bandwidth or uh, up down interface or if there is no more uh, uh, certain kind of uh, of uh, container uh, for the roadmap uh, we are working on a, a BPF uh, probe in order to capture the flow in a in a lightweight uh, manner uh, a dpdk1 so we ha we have poc for both of them um, and uh, we are working on the layer three topology because currently we, we, we have a kind of layer two topology and we are working on in order to add layer three and application uh, topology too. Uh, it's an open source uh, uh, tool and, and you can uh, reach out us uh, on IRC or on the mailing list. Thank you. If you have, que if you have questions. You can, yeah, but basically this is a single binary and statically linked, so you can just copy the binary somewhere and you can start it as an all-in-one service. And, and it, it, it comes with everything. So you, with one binary, you have the client, you have the, the analyzer if you want to, to have a, a distributed environment, but you can just have one. Okay, okay, okay. But you can, you can come. Okay, thank you.